Hello everyone, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. This is another episode of our series Power Query Tutorial and in today's episode we are going to learn about transform data. This is part 1. From this video onwards we will work on data flows and you will get to know how to create your very first data flow. In today's video you will learn how to use Power Query to transform data and also you will learn using the applied step list that means what are the different options you will get in the applied step lists so what are you waiting for let's get started if you are over here for the very first time please consider to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos. Now before starting today's video you should note down to use data flows in Power BI you should have at least Power BI Pro license or any of the higher license like Power BI Premium per user or Power BI Premium. Secondly in this video we are going to use Microsoft's Northwind or data feed link you can see on your screen right now I'll also provide the same link in the description section so you can directly copy this link and start using it Now without wasting any time let's start today's demo So right now I'm on my Power BI service account I have Power BI Pro license over here and once you are over here on your Power BI service page you can either create a new workspace where you want to create your data flow or you can use any existing one so I'm going to use my existing workspace which is my demo workspace I'll go inside it once you are inside your workspace you can directly click on the new and once you will click new you will find different options over here you can create your report you can create your paginated report or dashboard data set data flow streaming data sets or even you can upload your file directly over here click on data flow once you will click on the data flow you will get some other options on your window one of them is define new tables and the other options are like link tables from the other data flows import model or attach a common data model folder what we are going to do today we are gonna start with the define new tables because we are over here to create a new data flow so let's click on add new tables over here you will get all the data sources all the different categories and some of the other options at the top like you can see the files database power platform azure online services and others so basically you will get plenty of the options to get data from your desired data source so what we are going to do today we can either come over here all categories and from here we can choose what we need and right now we are going to need of this all data but if you are looking for some of the templates templates also you can find at the bottom of your screen so you can get it from here and also you should note down that this is power query choose data source window that means we can create data flows directly in the power bi service if you know about the data source then definitely you know all the points over here but if you are new over here then it's for you now either we can choose from the all categories like our data feed or we can go to the other you should note down under each of these icons their category has been mentioned like for example json it's from the file category if you will see pdf it's for also from the file category if you have odbc it's from the other category or if you have a terra database it's from the database now what we are going to do we are going to click or data feed or we can directly go to the other and here we can click or data feed now the url that i just mentioned a couple of minutes before you have to use the same url over here and paste it once I'll paste my URL over here, it's going to ask you credential required. So if you are using any database connection or something where you need to pass your credentials, then use them. Otherwise, we are going to leave as it is right now. We are not going to make any changes over here. Once you paste your URL and you select your authentication method, there are different authentication methods which we discussed in our previous videos of our query tutorial. So you can go back again and you can check the different kinds of authentications that Microsoft Power BI asked you once you start connecting with your data sources. Otherwise you can just leave it as it is right now and we don't need any gateway because it's an online data source. Now click next. 
Once you will click next, you will find that on your left hand side there are many tables are appearing. That means you can select the data from whichever you want. So for example, if I click on customers, it would show you the preview of the data. So you can see what the data is, how it's appearing, what are the columns and all. And now once you select this one, it's going to show you another option that is transform data, cancel, go back or select related table. So it's basically the same as you feel or you experience on the Power BI desktop application where whenever you are trying to connect with any database, there is an option to select the related table. So you can do that too. For example, if I'll click select related, so it can select another table which is orders table, but we don't need it. So let me uncheck this one. Now, once we select our table, we have to proceed further and here we are going to click transform data. So this is your very first view. Once you click on the transform data and over here, there are a couple of windows that you need to understand. First one is the top ribbon where you will see all the options, how to transform data, how to add a column or what are the different views that you can have a look or you can use them. Second one is on your left hand side pane that is this queries part. Here all the queries are going to be mentioned like all the tables that you are going to use or the new query that you want to create. This top part which you can see there is a table customer first source then navigation. So this is actually a diagram view that you can switch on or off according to your requirement. I'll just show you how to do that but it's an animated way where you can see everything how your data is actually flowing. On your right hand side you will see this query settings so where basically you will get your table name what are the different steps that you have applied in order to refine your data or to transform your data and at the bottom you will see this one big window where you will see your table data like what are the different columns inside your table. Also, you will see there is a one warning at the bottom part of this table. So completed in 1.58 seconds, there are 13 columns and 91 rows. If you will see on your right hand side bottom corner, you will find these steps. So what do you want over here? There are a the couple of options you want to off, you want to query script or step script. Step script basically each and every step or if you want a query script that also you can do over here then there are the different diagram view like right now it's showing the relationship if you're just looking for the table just click on this show data view and if you're also looking for the schema view you can just click on the schema view. Over here you will find some more options on your screen whether you want to see in the full screen mode or you want to zoom in zoom out or if you want to collapse all queries or you want to expand all queries. So these are the couple of options. Now let's go to the view. So under view also you will get the similar options. The first one is the advanced editor which is the most important one where you can perform your advanced operations if you know M code which we are gonna learn sooner or later. So don't worry about that. In our upcoming videos you will get a plenty of chance to work on it. Second is the parameters whether you want to always allow or not. So you will get a message over here that always allow, always allow parameterization in data source and transformation dialogues. Then this is a column if you want to go to any particular column. Suppose you have one table which contains more than 100 columns. So if you want to go any of the columns, you can directly search over there and you can go to those and even you can sort it out them. Now next to this is query settings. So under query settings you can either enable or disable this panel over here or you can directly click on these two columns as well. Now there is a diagram view which I just explained. You have auto highlighted related queries, compact view or show step labels. These are the couple of options that you will get over here. Then there is a script one which we just discussed at the right hand side bottom corner so it's the same. Then the schema view is also the same that we just discussed a couple of minutes back and then the data view. So everything is over here. Right now we are going to back to the data view first of all and under data view now we are going to discuss a couple of more options. One is monospaced. So monospaced is nothing but it's a type of font. So if you will do that it's going to convert it into another font which is monospaced fonts. 
if you want to show white spaces then you can do otherwise you can uncheck that but not only that suppose you are loading a table and you are expecting there can be some error in any of the columns or you want to check the profile of the column then you have to enable the column profile over here and then you can select the different options over here and you will get to know the quality of your column in our previous videos we have already discussed about what is column profile and what is the actually the column profile tool but if you don't know then no need to worry because in our upcoming videos we are again going to cover this topic so this is all all the different windows over here which you are going to experience when you are going to start working with the power query and they are the add columns transform data these are the basic ones if you are working on power bi you need not to worry about it but if you are a beginner over here then you can start experiencing those different options available into the top ribbon and we are going to use some of them right now so what we are going to do very first we are going to remove some of the columns so how i can do that what I can do, I can select these two columns over here. Now I have selected these columns. You can use shift button and then you can select these columns. And I'll click on this plus button again and I'll say remove columns. Now you can see that those columns have been removed and you will see one extra step is again there, removed column, which we just did it. So this is the first part. Now I want to perform grouping on this table. I want to count how many number of customers are there for each country. So what I can do, I'll again click on this plus button because I want to make another transformation. So click on it and here you want to find group by. So either you can scroll down like this or directly search it over here. Group by. Click on this. Now it's going to ask you what is your condition how you want to group your record so i'll say by country and i want to name the column customer you can change your column name over here and what kind of operation you want count rows some average these are the different options over here so you can say okay then click now you have to wait for some time it's performing all the transformations and you can see that we have 21 rows over here and it has given me all the country names and the number of customers in all those countries right now guys i don't need really this column profile because it's consuming a lot of space over here so i'm going to remove this so i can go again in the view pane i'll go here and i'll uncheck this column profile so it's not there anymore now what we are going to do, we are going to again get the data from the same source. This time instead of customer table, we are going to bring in supplier table so that we can get to know how many suppliers are there for each country. So again, go to the home page, get data. Now you can select directly from all data feed or you can even select the more option. And here again, you will get all the options available over here. So select this, paste the same URL, click next. And this time we are going to select the suppliers table. So let me check where is our supplier table. Here it is. So we'll say create. And now you will see at the bottom you have this suppliers table. We just want to perform only one operation over here and that is group by. So again this time I'm gonna go after scrolling it down. Group by. Note by supplier ID. I want to group by country. And I want to name it suppliers. Click OK. It will take some time. Now you can also see how query is running. How much time it took to complete this operation. So, so it took only 9.23 seconds. And if you will go back in the navigation, you will see there are 29 rows. And in order to just perform this operation, it took 9 seconds only. And though it has to group by and it has to perform a very heavy operation over here, but still it's quite fast. Now we have our supplier numbers per country. We have our customer numbers per country. So next I want to create a reference query. And for that, if you would like to create any new reference query, what you can do, you can just right click on this and you can say reference. Either here you can copy it, you can duplicate it, but I prefer to reference it. So click on reference. Now you can name it over here. We are saying country analysis. So I have given this 
table a new name that is country analysis so you can guys rename your table or also you can perform a lot of other operations over here if you want to see the property you want to put some description over here you can do that you can enable or disable the load as well you can access the advanced query editor or append merge or some other options and many of those in fact all of those options are available on this graphical user interface as well so the second part is that I want to merge query. I want to make a logical join between the suppliers and customer table and that should be my inner join so that I can get to know per country how many suppliers are there and how many customers are there. So either you can again click on these three dots, eclipses and click the merge queries or rather than that on your this tool on your graphical user interface you can say merge query now it's going to ask you okay our left hand side table is right now our country analysis which is basically the reference of customer table now what would be the right hand side so i'll say right hand side would be my suppliers table at the bottom of the supplier table you will find there are a couple of join options which are the logical joins in sql so if you are coming from a background of sql i'm sure you know that if you don't know that please write down your comment in the description section and probably we are going to create another video on that so right now i need the inner join so if you if you will just click on the inner join you can see it's been highlighted and now just click ok so if you will see over here I click OK but it's still not working. There's a reason it's not working because we didn't select the column on which we want to perform the join over here. So join only works when you have a reference column as well. So first table or the left side table has a country. So on second also we have to select the country and as soon as you will select it, it's going to give you the number of rows that you are going to get from this join. So just select OK. Now again you will see that you got your data over here you have your country names you have customer names and from the supplier table you will see notice this icon which is saying expand it once you will expand you can select which column you want so we already have the data from country so we don't want it we just need the suppliers click ok and now for each country you have number of customers and number of suppliers so those countries basically which don't have any supplier or those countries where there is no matching records are there so they have already been removed now we are going to discuss the last part of this one where we are going to create a new column so new column basically what you can do you can come under this add column part and under add column you have a lot of new options over here so if you are already working on power bi you already know what are the different options but over here what i'm gonna do i'm going to divide this customer column by suppliers column so let me rename it again see it's very easy it's a graphical user interface and microsoft power bi team has worked very hard on this to give you such a nice and smooth experience so i'll say take advantage of this guys you can learn it and it's very simple and easy to learn and if you have any problem you can comment down in the comment section and definitely we will try to help you asap so now um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to calculate the ratio of customers and suppliers. And so for that, I have to divide customer counts by the suppliers count. So how I can do that? For that, very first, I have to select my customer column and then select the suppliers column. So once you will select these two columns, we will come under the add columns. And over here under the standard, you will find there are the different operations. So you can either select divide or you can select the divide integer. If you want to know more the difference between divide and divide integers, you can see on your screen. So I'm going to just click divide integer. And you can see that I have this ratio. So let me rename it to ratio. Now there's one another important thing that you should notice always over here. That first I select customer and then supplier. That means my numerator is going to be the customer and denominator is going to be the supplier. However, if I first select supplier and then customer and again I perform the same operation, divide integer, you will see the values are different. Why? The reason is that it's going to consider numerator only the column which you have selected first. So always be careful while you are performing such operations in your Power Query editor. Now I need to delete this column. So either I can come over here directly and I can remove the column or I can just delete this step from my query settings where I have my all the applied steps. So just delete it. That's it guys. We have performed all the operations. Let me iterate it once more. 
what I did first I created a data flow from my workspace then I get the data from the all data feed or you can again click more from here I went into the other resources from where I pick this or data feed so you should know what kind of data source you have or what kind of connector you are going to need to get the data so basically these all what you are seeing in the under the all categories these are the connectors which helps you to bring the data from your desired data source into power query now once i selected this after that i get my first table over here in the very first customers i just removed the unnecessary columns and then group it by the country then again I applied the same steps and this time I bring my another table which is the suppliers table and in this table also I grouped it by the country. Then I created a reference query which is my country analysis and over here I just performed the merge operation. So once the merge operation is done what we did over here now you will select this one it's gonna load over again. So we got the customer numbers, we got the supply numbers for each country as well as we got the ratio and we keep it integer that means your whole number. So this is it. This is the final step that we just did. Now we have to save and close. It's going to validate your query. It will take a couple of seconds. And now you have to name it. It's going to ask you save your data flow and I'm going to give it a name country analysis. And if you would like to put or write some description over here, you can do that. Save it. Now it's going to give you a message. This data flow contains computer tables which requires Power BI Premium to refresh. To enable refresh, upgrade your workspace to a Power BI Premium capacity. So if I really want to apply the refresh and I need a Power BI Premium, otherwise it's going to work. So basically with Power BI Pro, you can create your data flows. But if you have some of the tables, which are the computer tables, then in those cases, you are going to need the Power BI Premium Capacity License. So don't forget guys to share your feedback with us in the comment section and we would look forward to it. So this was the demo for Power Query Data Flows where we learned the use Power Query to transform data and using the applied steps list. Stay connected with us. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the updates.